Hi, I'm Beth Rite. I'm the president of the Boston New Music Initiative. I'm here today talking with Anya Vu. She's um, a composer currently working as a lecturer at the University of Chicago. And uh, she also did a commission for us um, as part as a winner of the commissioning competition. Um, but today we're gonna be talking first about one of her newer works, Small Tenderness. And then we'll also talk a little bit about the work she did with us, Strange Birds. So um, great to see you, Anya. Um, can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me here. It's great to be uh, in touch with you again. And I have very fond memories of working with the Boston New Music Initiative in 2021. Um, so I, my name is Anya Wu. I was born and raised in Poland. Um, uh, I'm from Warsaw and I came to the US to study um, for my undergrad, I went to the Eastman School of Music, where I did composition and music theory, as well as a minor in social psychology from the University of Rochester. Uh, and then I went on to do my PhD at the University of Pennsylvania between 2017 and 2022. Um, oh, and at Eastman, I was between 2020, 2013 and 2017. Um, and after... After I finished my PhD, I went to the University of Chicago to do a postdoc. It's it was a one year position. Then I last semester I was at the University of Texas at Austin, uh, where I was a lecturer in composition and I was teaching um, uh, a graduate seminar uh, on the topic of my own choice and uh, and got more like composition teaching experience. So that was great. And currently I'm back at UChicago lecturing um, this course called Materials and Design. And it's an introduction uh, to composition course for non-majors. Or, I mean, I guess they're open for majors and non-majors, but they're mostly non-majors. Cool. Um, so yeah, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about this piece, uh, Small Tenderness. And, um, so I guess I'll start with um, Anya, why you chose this particular piece to talk about. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, a piece that I wrote in 2023 uh, during the summer. So it's one of my more most recent works. And uh, also it's it feels quite substantial in terms of um, instrumentation and length and uh, the the instrumentation is very, very dear to me because it's a piece for a vocal sextet and string quartet, and those are like my favorite forces to write for. Um, so I was very excited uh, when when I got to be commissioned for, for this instrumentation. Um, and it also, the premiere took place at uh, Tanglewood. Um, I was a fellow there uh, the summer before uh, in 2022. Um, so this summer, this past summer, 2023, I was back there for this premiere. And so it was, it just had a very special meaning. Um, and not only that, the the commission was uh, dedicated um, to Ellen Heistein. I mean, when they commissioned me, they said Ellen Heistein, who was a director of Tanglewood of 25 years, um, wanted me to write a vocal piece. And so that was a, a, a big honor to to, to, to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and then a little bit, I guess, well, one of the questions I had was, um, did they choose the instrumentation or did you get to choose it? So, um, initially they, Ellen Heisen wanted me to write a vocal piece. She said, um, yeah, I want Anya to write a vocal piece. And they initially asked me to write a vocal sextet. Um, and then I asked them if it would be okay to add uh, a string quartet. And they were, and they were like, yeah, sure. So <laughs> uh, I just asked for more work, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but, but it, it, it's an instrumentation that I've always wanted to do. I think the strings and and voice have so much in common. They have a huge range of, um, of expressivity, um, of color, of timbre, and it. I think those are probably the most, um flexible and versatile instruments that, uh, to me, at least. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna actually ask you, oh, so um, in specifically in the vocal sextet, I'm not sure if it's like 
I don't think it's standardized, but um, so it's for soprano, two mezzos, two tenors, and a bass baritone. Um, so again, did they tell you those specific voice types, or is that just like what you heard? That's what they specifically asked for. Yeah. So uh, when they were asking me to write this vocal sex set, they said, you know, wait until we have all the assignments done for the vocal fellows because they, you know, they have so much repertoire to learn. Um, and so they told me, yeah, these are the voice types that we have. Um, so once we knew, um, once those students knew they were chosen um, and passed the auditions, um, they waited. So we had to wait until then. Uh, and then Don Upshaw, who reached out to me about about this, um, she said uh, that, yeah, now you can contact the singers because I wanted to contact them personally to ask them uh, about their, the information about the voice. That's what I always do uh, before I write a vocal piece. I did that also with Mary McKenzie, who sang uh, the piece Strange Birds uh, for your commission. Um, and so, yeah, they, they all the fellow, all the vocal fellows got back to me and and gave me detailed, uh, you know, uh, information about their voices, which was very very helpful during the process of writing it. Yeah, they the piece like um, very clearly lays well, like sits well with all of those singers, you know. Um, I hope so. <laughs> and then uh, one of the other things which you mentioned, which, which but which I think was really successful in this particular piece is you were talking about how much the full range of expressivity, both expressivity, the full range of expressivity in both strings and uh, voices. And I really felt like in this piece, you really use that into great effect. Um, in there's like ways, there's times in which like the strings and the voices feel like one thing mm -hmm. and together. And then there's times when they kind of work against each other. Um, and it's really, I think, at least for me, and it might be different for other people, but like the points at which they sort of meld together were some of like the best parts, the parts I enjoyed the most. Um, Thank you. Um, so I was wondering, um, and the other thing is that um, one thing that I think a lot of people forget about the voice and you use to great effect is um, the percussiveness that, that you can get in the voice. And you use that a lot in this piece. Um, I guess, I don't know. Can you talk a little bit about how you use the voice percussively? Yeah. Um, well, I have always been interested in the percussivity of the voice, not just in this piece, but also in some of my other uh, pieces from 2018, 2019. Um, in fact, I I started discovering that quality of the voice um, when I write, when I was, when I began starting Right when I began writing the text. So back in 2018, I I was uh, going to go to Soundscape and they wanted me to write a piece for percussion, piano and voice, um, which also, you know, has is very percussion based, right? I mean, piano and percussion. Um, and so to match that instrumentation, I wrote a Polish poem that also uh, was was had a lot of like rhythmic, um, elements to it and uh, and uh, lots of percussivity. I mean, not 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 throughout the whole poem, but there was a part specifically that played a lot with like tick sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think working with the Polish language also made me um, think a lot about like, uh, you know, using other aspects of the voice that maybe uh, one doesn't always think of. Um, and then my Next piece in 2019, tick tac plays a lot with, you know, percussive sounds of the voice and of course the sounds of the ticking clock. With this particular piece, Small Tenderness, uh, I tried to explore both like the very rich vibrato full sound and uh, which I think happens more towards the end of the piece um, and have that contrasted with um, the beginning, which is more like, sh um, you know, uh, staccato, short, uh, and um, kind of more rhythmically driven. And it's, they asked me to write a 5, 10 to 15 minute piece. Um, and so, you know, when, when planning such a la large form, I, I think a lot about contrasts and, you know, how to, how to really explore 
lots of different aspects of of the voice and and of the strings and both of them have you know when i said that they have rich sounds they can do both super percussive dry uh, you know music and then they can also be so so incredibly like rich and um you know vibrato and so it's i really enjoy working you know within this whole large spectrum yeah and i think in this piece you really kind of you tried all the things or like did all the things there's like <laughs> voices being percussive contrasted with strings being melodic you know and all of all of those different possible combinations but in a very interesting interesting way um thank you but talking about this piece i also kind of wanted so you also wrote the text so I was kind of curious about your process and like, how does the text fall into the process? Do you start with the text? Do you start with the music? Do they kind of happen together? If you could kind of maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so I always start with the text first. Um, and for this particular piece, I, so in the past few years, I've always been writing my own text like since 2018. Um, I've been writing my own text, but then for this particular project, I thought, you know, why don't I um, use uh, text by someone else um, who can, you know, who who is much better at it than I am? Because I I don't really have any training. I never went to any. Um, I never took any classes in poetry or, you know. So um, I I came across this very interesting. Um, piece of writing um, by Olga Tokarczuk and uh, she's a Polish writer, novelist and she won the Nobel Prize in 2018 um, and I have read a book of her in high school and I remember really really liking it so I uh, when I came across her Nobel Prize lecture, so it's like this 25 page uh, 27 page long uh, lecture and I read it and I was I was so deeply inspired by by the depth of her ideas and it, it's it's a it's it's a really beautiful uh, piece of writing and I would recommend to all artists to go check it out maybe I'll provide a link to, to it we'll put a link in the in the description yeah so I I knew that maybe this is what the text that I want to like excerpts um from this text that I want to use as lyrics for my piece. So I wrote um, an email to the Nobel Foundation to ask for permission. Uh, and I I actually didn't think I would get, have any problems getting the permission, but they wrote me back uh, saying that they, because I'm not a major publisher, they cannot allow uh, for me to, <laughs> to use the text. So that was quite disappointing and um, a little unexpected. Uh, but in the end, I thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna write a poem myself <laughs> that is based or that is inspired by this by this lecture. So that's what I ended up doing, and um, the, the 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 title of the lecture is called the Tender Narrator, and that's where my title comes from, Small Tenderness. Um, I mean, there are so many ideas in this in this piece uh, in in this. Um, essay if i may call it so yeah i think it's an i think it's an essay so many uh, interesting ideas but the 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 main idea is that uh, she is trying to um write literature where you know the there is no like narrator that narrates only in first person but more about the narrator that is able to connect with with the whole universe and connect with anything that is not done that's kind of like the whole essay in a nutshell. Um, but the the poem has a lot of references to other to you know small uh, to different parts of the essay. I can pull up the <clears throat> the the poem if that's okay. Maybe I can share the screen. So it goes from I didn't have enough you know room, so that's why it's in three columns. But you basically go you know first column, then second column, and then last column. Um, so the, the poem, the first column has, um, four stanzas and each of them is like a different, very different image with a short sentence, short sentences. Um, 
and yeah it's kind of very they all seem very disconnected from each other and then the second column um goes kind of repeats but in reverse order of these stanzas but with some variations but then i also add the same sentence i am small but my body travels through distant corners of time um and then distant corners of time also starts the previous um previous stanza so it's a b c d actually, actually if you go to the next slide i think that will be yeah ah, uh, clearer what i'm trying to do yeah and then aha yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so musically um each of these different stanzas at the beginning in the first column they are um you know different sections of music so the first one is i think a bit more percussive um sitting murmurs unnoticed by most a teapot talking it tells me that it is parched then in the second one um we have um also still kind of percussive um strings but 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 now the voice becomes more lyrical and we also have a soprano singing in the background um being the voice of the mother we are reading the the, the text mm -hmm. mm, then in the third stanza the crown of baobabs their roots crawling out of a worn out page from a book lying wide open uh, this is a uh, an image of uh, like very tall trees, baobabs, um, and I tried to like do some word painting by having the the voices like open up like branches like that. So like uh, yeah, and then the last one, distant corners of time. Here, um, I think there's the uh, the strings playing their Kind of supporting the voice, the voices, but also still doing, still going against, against it in some ways. Um, and uh, there's also a little bit of like word painting. I mean, when uh, when the singers sing black and white photographs, black is a chord of just like black uh, um, keys on the piano, and then white are like sliding up or down a half step to white notes. Um, and, and then because the poem has a lot of text, uh, by the time I got to the second column, I decided to have this whole column spoken, but to the music that uh, belonged to the corresponding music from the, pre from, yeah, the previous section. So um, it would be the strings that, uh, um, that, play that, 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 that play that music reminiscing um, the previous sections and then the, each individual, each of these are, I think, being spoken, each sense is being spoken by, by a different singer. Um, and so what I'm trying to do here is um, by adding I, first of all, I am small, but my body travels through, or but my eyes reach up to the crown of massive baobabs, but my voice sings too. So I'm reading the second line of each stanza. Uh, and I'm kind of personifying, ma making, kind of trying to connect the world through experience of some kind of made up, you know, character, na narrator, mm -hmm. uh, to make it more uh, personal and relatable. And that person is abstract, but, uh, but from like four very separate images, we kind of have a more narrative like thread. Mm -hmm. um, see from a lens of, of of someone and then the last column is the climactic point so we have new text here but prefaced with the, i am small but my arms stretch outward further and beyond uh one thing i just also wanted to mention is um previously the my body my eyes my voice my ears all those pertain to you know uh different ways we can engage with the world, you know, by seeing, hearing, um, things like that. Uh, and then here, I think this is when the emotional intensity really is at its peak. 
um, in the upper stanza of the uh, third column. Uh, I am small, but my arms stretch outward further and beyond to hold you, touch you, shelter you from this strange and beautiful thing called time, to embrace your fate and pain and make them also mine. And this part also refers to the end of the lecture, some parts of it, um, where she says th that tenderness is is like the most modern, uh, modest, sorry, modest form of love. Um, but then I changed it in the last stanza and I wrote it's tenderness is the purest form of love. Somehow the word modest didn't sound as as like singable. <laughs> so I, I sometimes also made some adjustments. Um, and then the, the last stanza, I'm small, but at least I am. Drowning, bathing, relishing in the tireless flow of utmost tenderness. Tenderness is the purest form of love. All that's left of me, all that I can give. Um, and this last part is um, is a bit more extended, and uh, it goes back and forth between a few chords. So it's kind of like the the big epilogue um, of the whole piece. And uh, the upper stanza is the climactic point uh, where the strings and voices at some point they sing in unison. And there's also word painting on the word in the tireless flow of utmost tenderness. Yeah, so with the word flow, I tried to um, build a thick counterpoint with, you know, cascading lines in the voices and in the strings. So, uh, so I first wrote the text and then, uh, and then wrote the music. And even when I was writing the music, I would kind of keep going back and forth uh, with fixing the text too, uh, mm -hmm. like little words here and there, just to make it, you know, sound better when sung, um, things like that. Yeah. So I would say um, the 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 nice thing about writing your own text is that you have full control over both the text and the music um, during the process, which is nice. Like I'm not stuck with the text you know um when i'm composing yeah it's so i i think that the the poem is also very gorgeous oh, um and the other thing i would say that's really there's there's like um kind of a musicality to the form it's almost like you can tell that you're a musician writing poetry <laughs> because, of, because of the way that it has those repetitions and those relations <laughs> Just, like very musical <laughs> thank you yeah i think i i think of myself as more of like a composer with words rather than like a poet um yeah I, I think of yeah I, I think very musically when I write text I think that was a I'm glad that came across so thank you um so uh the kind of the last one last thing that I'd ask about this is there's kind of um different styles within this piece and I was wondering if that those were like were you playing with some expectations of different styles or was it more of a just a reaction of just you know creating what went with the words if you feel does that make sense yeah totally um so you're not the first person who said that actually <laughs> um so i for, for me i think the different styles maybe come from like those four stanzas at the beginning that portray different different uh, landscapes um different images so i was you know just thinking about like uh you know what kind of character or mood um does what do i want to create within these um stanzas and i think some of them also uh, i added a bit of humor like with the first stanza with a teapot talking i i kind of uh, musically tried to you know incorporate a bit of uh, humor um and i mean as a as a musician i myself love uh, as a pianist i really enjoy right playing you know music from all sorts of all different um um time periods so i i love playing baroque music classical contemporary romantic um and I embody in a way like all these different styles and and I just love exploring exploring them as a composer as well. Nice. 
yeah it's just a lot more fun um yeah but i think the last part feels i hope at least that the, the last part um feels like it's um distilled from all this all these different images that came before right like we kind of jump between different musics uh, and then the ending i think sounds a bit more extended and like stays with it for for a while we also have a longer string section a string quartet section when it um gets to the around playing with the word tenderness mm -hmm. the last stanza oh yeah that yeah. especially it's like it definitely it's very beautiful and it definitely feels like a combination combination of like everything of like everything that happened before coming together mm -hmm. so. yeah so um, mm -hmm. lovely piece anything else you want to tell us about this piece that I didn't ask you about um I don't know I I, I would just say that uh, I feel like it's this piece um I don't know if it's a good piece or a bad piece but for me it's it's a piece that's very much me and and I think that's always nice when the piece comes out and and you feel like it really represents represents you um if, I don't know if that makes sense but but that's what I feel about this piece and I don't feel that about all of my pieces um so yeah yeah that's wonderful I can I can relate to that yeah with mm -hmm. your sometimes uh being satisfied with your piece yourself is um one of the hardest things to achieve as a composer yeah it's not just that um whether I think what I, um, the thing that I'm happy about it is that, yeah, I think it just represents uh, well, like who I am and what my values are in music. And I think that, yeah, it's nice when it happens. Yeah, nice, <laughs> wonderful. Um, so we'll pivot a little bit and talk a little bit about the piece that you wrote for BNMI, um, Strange Birds. Um, and as you mentioned, Mary McKenzie was the soprano that premiered that. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about that piece? Yeah. Um, so initially, when you asked me to write for uh, to write this commission, I think I also asked to add voice. <laughs> um, and that's because I was working at, on my dissert, doctoral dissertation at the time that had the exact same instrumentation. Um, but I just was missing a voice. And so I, I thought I would ask and, and I'm very grateful that, that you said yes and it ended up working out. Um, and it was a great way for me to kind of try out a portion of my dissertation. So uh, the scene Strange Birds is the third scene of my opera called Through the Doors. Um, and it is also um, an opera of which I... I co-wrote the story with a collaborator, Modesta Gorol, um, who initially, I mean, not initially, she she and I, we decided that I would be writing the music and she will be um, creating the background visuals. She's an art designer, graphic designer. Uh, we met at a piano camp many years ago. So we both <laughs> started out as like pianists and then I ended up going into composition and she ended up going into um, art, visual art. And so, um, so we wrote the story together and then I wrote the libretto um, and this scene, Strange Birds is, is a very fun one. And um, it's, it's when the main protagonist finally gets out of her house for the first time to look for her father. And she enters this strange universe of, of like, human-like birds that also speak and are, you know, kind of human size and very silly as well. <laughs> um, and so she's asking them whether they have seen um, a soldier with a ticking metronome because her father is a metronome maker. So the story is kind of, you know, for children and, and a little bit uh, surrealist. But uh, I, when I was writing the piece at the time, um, I, I wanted to have, you know, the instrumentalist, each instrumentalist embody a different bird. So the violinist is a magpie. Um, the pianist is an ostrich. Uh, and then the percussionist is supposed to be the percussionist. 
Mm, and then the the flute is a is a lark. Yeah, 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 yeah it's a lark. Um, so so anyway, she interacts with each of these birds throughout the piece and approaches each of them and uh, asks their, them a question and then they 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 speak back to her. I mean, she kind of sings and it's kind of between singing and and speaking, I think. But the birds are just like speaking back to her. Sometimes she speaks to them too, but I kind of enjoy this gray area, you know, um, where it feels more natural. I think it feels more natural that way. Uh, and even the way I wrote the vocal lines for for Odessa, the protagonist, I was aiming to have him be as like naturally, as close to the natural speech as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, every every bird has a very different character. The magpie is like this greedy bird that's trying to get money out of her. And whenever she's asking him a question, he says, uh, I'll tell you for five cents or I'll tell you for 10 cents, you know, things like that. So um, so then she ends up going to the ostrich, who is the pianist and the pianist. The reason why I wanted the ostrich to be the pianist was because in the story, the ostrich is, although it's the biggest bird in the world, it like hides its head in the sand. And so I wanted the pianist to like hide the head, his head in or her head in the in the piano. Um, that, I don't think that ended up happening in the performance because the, he also had to play. <laughs> yeah. So it would it would be hard to to kind of both um, you know be enacting the role and also playing. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And then the flutist, I think is the lark singing you know very beautifully. And so uh, instead of responding to her, they're just like responding with music mm -hmm. yeah and with the, the the percussionist being the parrot the parrot is just repeating everything that the that Odessa is saying so uh, and in the end I think the conductor ends up also in being part of the story yeah, yeah. so John Masco was uh, was the conductor uh, and he he also participated uh, by conducting and and speaking at the same time yeah so he's the one who points to, uh, gives her um, a clue where to look for the father. <laughs> so that she can go on on her journey. Yeah, so she can. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I know that our performers had like so much fun doing this piece. Um, and it is very, it's also very humorous. <laughs> like, <laughs> really, um, like it would be, I yeah, I would love to see it at some point with like, full costumes like with some really crazy it would be amazing yeah 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 hopefully one day um so yeah if if i i kind of like the, the the musicians participating uh on stage another scenario that i had for this piece for the whole opera piece was to have um the musicians not participate but having one singer embody different birds um wow. You know, I mean, I just, I think having musicians speak and act is always a tricky thing. It, it really depends on the musicians. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think that is it for today. Um, anything else that you can think of? <laughs> well, I mean, the piece, I actually have written four out of six scenes of the six scenes. Um, so I have two more scenes to go, but um, I'm kind of leaving the project on the side now uh, just to get some time and, and, and distance from it um, before maybe going back. I mean, I, I, I definitely want to go back to it one day and have it finished and, and staged, performed and everything. But it is it is a big undertaking. And I realize I have never written like a short small opera before, you know, so like jumping into a um, full cool, I don't know, 75, 80 minute long opera, it's kind of a big task. <laughs> so um, I think taking my time is for now seems like an, a good approach. Yeah. I don't want to just do a poor job and finish it uh, in a rush, you know, and have it done. It just costs so much to put it together. And, you know, so I want to make sure I get it as close to right as possible. Yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah. 
look forward to seeing any future developments on that front and also your music for the future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, thank you so much for being here and talking with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.